that, I want to now bring into the conversation Professor of Political Science at Bar Ilan University and President of the Jerusalem Based Research Institute, NGO Monitor, Gerald, Stein, Gerald Steinberg. Sir, thank you very much for joining us. Um, if I can start, sir, with your reaction to this Amnesty International report about these four specific days, there were some very strong accusations there as we were just hearing from Mr. Hejazi summarizing it. Uh, you, have you had a chance to read the report and, and what do you take away from its findings? There really isn't a report here. I think we need to be very careful about the language that's used. This is a political effort, and it's part of an ongoing agenda, and we saw it represented very well by Mr. Hijazi. It's uh, demonization of Israel, taking out the context of what was a very brutal and bitter war. Uh, if somebody was seriously interested in amnesty, is clearly not interested in doing a, an analysis, an independent analysis, they would look at the context. They would, there would be pictures on your screen of the terrible rocket attacks against Israel. 4,563 rockets. Gaza is a very poor area. It's very tiny. And what do they invest all their money in? In rockets, missiles, tunnels to kill civilians. That's a very important part of the story. But unfortunately, the people who run Amnesty and write these kinds of reports are not really interested in human rights. Um, and so the Rafa report that they wrote is a very typical example of that. It's very glitzy. It uses, and we keep seeing these pictures over and over again on your screen, it uses these very glitzy sort of CSI type of uh, images and claims maps and other things. But the people who wrote it don't know anything about what they're talking about. Even the language that's used, war crimes. Well, to do war crimes, to order to allege war crimes, and you ask the Right question, you got the wrong answer. In fact, you have to know something about number one, what were the military targets in the area? Now, if you have tens of thousands of rockets scattered in this tiny area of Gaza, in mosques, in hospitals, in houses, every place else possible, then what is, in fact, the military target and what's a civilian target? So Many let's, of the people uh, who uh, killed were Hamas terrorists, let's but they're pick not visited up, such. Let's pick up on that point that you are raising, which is on those four specific days in Rafah. Um, following the capturing of the Israeli soldier uh, and what is widely reported as the Hannibal Directive that was implemented, do you see there being any violations by the Israeli military in conducting the type of attacks that have been described, not just by Amnesty International, but by journalists on the ground, by other NGOs, uh, as a wanton destruction of the city of Rafah to try to implement that directive? Uh, you've served, you've been a reporter in war zones, and you know what it's like right. to see rockets coming in and rockets going out. I don't know if you've ever seen a dead soldier, a dead Israeli soldier, or seen his body parts captured by members of Hamas, but we've seen that. And we know these people. You're talking about Israelis who were killed in cold blood, and then the goal was to steal their body parts or their bodies and hold them for ransom, for kidnapping. That is incredibly inhuman. Uh, I, I, I don't, I, sir, I don't, I don't disagree that. with you, but I, I don't disagree with you about your characterization of the inhumanity of, of the war on both sides, but specifically in terms of this pursuit of trying to uh, implement the Hannibal Directive. That's what I was really specifically well, asking you about. Salah Hijazi and uh, Yael Weitzman, who we saw at the beginning, who runs this what I would call pseudo forensic architecture program, which unfortunately I think I think European taxpayers need to examine why their money over 1.3 million pounds or right. euros rather went into this uh, pseudo CSI type of project. None of these people really have the answers to this. Okay. All those pictures that we saw, they don't really know. We have eyewitness testimony from some Palestinians in Gaza, but we don't really know. We do have an Israeli detailed report about what happened there, and it's not true that there was no investigation. It's an ongoing investigation. If you're on the ground in a war, if you have to fight in these very dirty hand-to-hand -hand combat uh, wars that take place in these densely crowded urban areas, to document everything is extremely, extremely difficult. And again, amnesty and forensic architecture are clueless as to what actually happened there. So the question of exactly what the response was and whether it was an appropriate response is a very important question. It cannot be answered through propaganda. So how can it be answered? answered? How do other countries deal with these issues? Now, it's very important. The United States faced somewhat similar situations in Fallujah and did a lot more damage. And if you look, if there was really something that was not just propaganda, but a real forensic architecture, if they actually used images, they would compare different places. The problem is that militaries in democratic countries, including Israel, have a great deal of trouble figuring out, it's very complicated, when civilians are used as human shields on a massive basis. So whether the response in Rafa, and we're talking about four days out of a 51-day war, a war that began with kidnapping and killing of four Israeli teenagers uh, in the West Bank, 
and extended into Gaza when rocket attacks started to increase from Gaza. All those things are part of that war. So taking out four days and looking at them in a very skewed and inaccurate way is not at all helpful. It doesn't tell us anything about the principles, about human rights, about international law. What it really tells us is do you believe this propaganda war abuses children, it abuses terrible destruction. Mr. Steinberg, do you believe the Israeli military is capable of investigating itself and any potential wrongdoing in terms of its conduct inside Gaza? And if so, can you cite an example of where it found any wrongdoing? But again, one has to ask the same question about the United States and Afghanistan or Iraq, Yugoslavia. But we're here Britain. to discuss, Those sir. But we're here to discuss the war in Israel and this report. We've but definitely we exhausted. We've definitely exhausted. Uh, certainly, in this show and others, we've just exhausted America's conduct in Iraq and Afghanistan. But you're but here to talk about you Israel ask and Gaza. These questions legitimately without looking at a comparative framework. How does one deal with these issues? And to ask that question, you really, and to answer it, I would say, one has to have significant experience. And knowledge. Of course, here again, Amnesty, the people who did this report, don't have that. So, does Israel have the capability? Absolutely. This is a country, unfortunately, for that for 67 years has had to face a number of very damaging wars. Okay, you don't have on your screen pictures of what Israelis went through. You don't have pictures of Hadar Goldwyn, Golden's family. You don't have pictures of the hundreds of or th tens of thousands of Israelis who've been killed in terrorism since 1947-48. That's all part of the picture. And I think Israel has demonstrated extremely well under these kinds of circumstances that it can make those distinctions between legitimate use of force to defend yourself against these kinds of massive terror attacks. And perhaps it's, and I now see a picture of Hadar Golden. You can understand his family's tragedy when they found out what happened to him and the fear right. of his body. His body is still being held by Hamas. So is Israel looking at the, the choices? We debate these every day. We right. debate them very intensely. Mr. How do we deal with these kinds of situations? Mr. And anybody, let me just point out that anybody sure. who can provide constructive information is always welcomed. Unfortunately, what we have instead is a propaganda war, and that does a lot of destruction. Thank you very much, Mr. Steinberg, for your insight on that. You're watching Roadmap on Shift by MSNBC. We'll be right back after the break.